After handling Wisconsin in the first round of the Big Ten tournament, the IU men's soccer team took on the difficult task of playing at Ohio State Buckeyes. My co-host was at Yagley Field for the match. Appearing in the tournament semifinals for their fifth consecutive year and being tournament hosts was not enough to give IU the edge over the number one seeded Ohio State Buckeyes, losing Friday 4-2. to two. Just disappointing. Uh, I thought we came out with good energy, scored the first goal, and I think a timely goal by them kind of took the wind out of our sails a little bit. Uh, it comes down to finishing. Now, I thought the chances they had, not it wasn't that, that many, but they took care, they took them well. And that's, I think, was the name of the game. And they, you know, I, I think back when we're up 1-0 and we, the goalkeeper makes a great save on Will to make it, could have made it 2-0, you know, that, that was a big save. Shot by number 11, Will Bruin. The goals they scored weren't bad balls by them by any means, you know. They served a great ball into their guy who finished it very well, so. Um, you know, we could have been marked a little better. Like I said, it was a mental error, but, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. We just talked about pushing on them, you know, not sitting back again. We had to, to get people forward and uh, really just go for it. You know. From Bill Armstrong Stadium, I'm Kristen Carroll, Hoosier Sports Night. When you think Indiana basketball, Bob Knight automatically comes to mind. And the same thing can be said about Joe Paterno when you think Penn State football. Lucas Mayer experienced the Joe Pa madness in Happy Valley when he visited Paternoville. Welcome to Paternoville. This is the spot in Happy Valley where Penn State students camp out starting Monday or Wednesday, depending on the hype of the opponent, to get front row seats to a Nittany Lions football game. Hail to the light the Lions, loyal and loyal, true and hail on the mater, with your white and white and Uh, Penn State fans are a little more crazy. They set their hopes a little higher than everybody else is, uh, and they think they're going to a BCS game every year. Um, Penn State fans just live and breathe Penn State football. Like we've been out here for every single game of the season. Like this is our life. We just love Penn State football. And just the pride is just shows at every level. From tailgating to uh, camping out, and um, you know, it's, just, it's really. I mean, Penn State State College becomes the third largest city in the state on game days. So it's just. Uh, it's, a, like I said, a religion up here. Penn State students form groups of up to 10 and must have someone at the Paternoville site 24 hours a day. We camp out every game and I see about like once a week our group like rotates and takes turns, but a lot of people, like 200 people do it for every game and then like if it's a big game, like 700 to 1,000 people. Uh, I haven't missed a Paternoville since freshman year. I'm currently a senior, so that's 28, 29 Paternovilles. Um, the school revolves around football, like this is a huge football school, everyone loves football. The alumni come back, tailgating is huge, people camp out. If Fred Glass has an ultimate goal for the IU football program, he should take a trip down to Happy Valley and observe Paternoville. Who knows, maybe one day we'll see a lynch town outside of Memorial Stadium. From Paternoville, I'm Lucas Mayer, who's your sports night. Joe Buck is the voice of Fox Sports. He's done play-by-play -play for the World Series and the Super Bowl. Ben Heisler is the voice of the rundown. He's done play-by-play -play for Indiana football and basketball teams. Here now is the meeting of the two great minds as our own Ben Heisler sat down with former Hoosier Joe Buck. In 1987, talk about oh, yeah. your, fresh, your freshman year here at Indiana. Uh, what do you remember most about being in school here and what type of college student were you? Wow, that's a loaded question. If I said that I was a great college student, uh, first of all, my nose would grow and uh, would take over the rest of this shot that you have. I, uh, when I showed up here in 1987, I had come from St. Louis, and I, I came from a small school, prep school, all boys, 60 kids in my graduating class to, what, 60,000 people walking around, and uh, not really knowing where to go, where to walk, uh, my name was irrelevant, it was my social security number, where were my classes, what time did I have to be there. It was a great education and uh, the whole part of the education that I think I still, uh, I still use to this day is being prepared for class, being prepared, having my work done with all that there is to do here. There's so many distractions and, and it's, it's a challenge to get your work done. It's 89, the Louisville Redbirds. 91, the St. Louis Cardinals, so on and so forth, 24, 
uh, with Fox, calling your first World Series game in, uh, when you were 27 years old. Uh, is your head spinning at all at this point, accomplishing so much at a very young age? You know, you don't think about it that way when it's going on. I think when I think back on it, and I, I think back on how immature I was probably when I was walking around here from 87 to 91 or parts of 91, uh, and then to realize that, you know, six years later I'm doing the World Series or three years later I'm broadcasting the NFL on Fox. I mean, that, that makes my head spin a little bit now, and I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. I'm saying that because I kind of faked my way through it, and, and I think it's the only way in this business that, that, that we're in that you can get better at it. I mean, you, you can't read about how to interview somebody, or you can, but until you sit across from me and you're asking me questions and there's cameras rolling, there's nothing that you can do to prepare you for that in, until you do it. And so that, that's the fun part of it. Was there a moment for you when it finally sort of made, all, it's, it made the right sense for you? Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's probably, that happened a lot later than you would imagine. I mean, I, was, I did that World Series in 96, and I think it took until 98, 99 before I really felt comfortable. I think you get to a point in your career where you don't feel like you have to prove everything you know every time you open your mouth. And, and when you can get to that point and you've built up enough credit, then I think you can relax and enjoy your job. Until then, uh, you're scrambling. With Fox, you've become sort of the national voice and you've had that opportunity since 94. But you also had an opportunity to be with St. Louis for 13 years as the hometown voice. Do you miss being able to say into the microphone with an excited voice, getting anxious and watching Pujols drive a home run maybe 400 feet, that, that type of call perhaps that maybe you can't really do anymore? Yeah, it's a great question, and yes, I do. Um, that's really the fun in broadcasting. I think when you can let your raw emotion go, you know, I, I am a car. I grew up a Cardinal fan. I'm from St. Louis. Uh, when I was starting out, I mean, there are calls that I made, Ray Langford bowling over Darren Dalton at the plate, and my voice cracked. I mean, I, I lost everything. I lost all credibility at that moment. But I, you know, it, it just was from pure excitement and joy. And that that part of this business is gone for me. I, you can't do that on a national level unless you want to be laughed out of the business. So. And it's not just about the Cardinals. I think you have to kind of play it a little more adult and straight. And I do miss that, yeah. You talk about some of those growing pains. Can you maybe reflect on a time that was either your most awkward moment in the booth, most embarrassing moment, almost worst broadcast that you can remember? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, my first television broadcast was something that I'll never forget because I had never done TV before. I was caked in makeup. It was about 130 degrees in the booth at Shea Stadium. And we were coming on. I was filling in for Kent Wilson, who was doing the Cardinal TV at the time. We were coming on at 6 o'clock no matter what. And 6 o'clock happened to hit in the middle of a doubleheader. And so all we had to do was fill time. We had to fill 45 minutes. And they're like, OK, uh, we want you to s recap what happened in game one. OK, I, I think I can do that. And then we want you to throw down to Al Roboski on the field, who's got a, an interview for you. Great. So I start talking, and I'm sweating a little bit and the makeup starting to run. And then sweat starts to collect in my ear. And then the earpiece actually pops out because it's my ear so wet with sweat <laughs> and it falls behind me. And so I say, now let's go down to the field and here's Al Roboski with an interview. And they're telling me in my ear that Al can't find his microphone down there. And I know from watching the Brady Bunch, which is way before your time, that when that red light's on, the camera's on me and the red light stayed on. I'm like, Okay, and I, I can't hear them telling me to continue talking. So I said the same thing over and over and over again. It was awful. But the best thing was I eventually got through that, and then doing the game was like a piece of cake. In 1987, as we said before, right after night, and the Hoosiers won their third basketball championship. Can you see yourself back here when Tom Crean takes these Indiana Hoosiers back to the national championship? Yeah, I'm, I've become such a fan of his, and I, I think that they – they meaning you, Indiana, has got the right guy. And, and I, there's no doubt in my mind that with his energy and his ability, uh, that will happen. And yeah, I, I would love to come here and witness it because when I came here in 87, it was the semester after that. You know, I got here and they had just won. Uh, and I remember the pride I had uh, sitting on my couch at home in St. Louis while I'm going, that's my school. They just won the national championship. Keith Smart just hit a shot from the baseline to beat Syracuse. And I'm headed there. And that was, uh, 
that was exciting and, and I never got a chance to feel that again as a student here and I'd love to do it as somebody who went here. Well that wraps it up for this edition of Hoosier Sports Night. Be sure and check us out on IUSTV.com and come back and see us next week when we see if the Hoosiers could reclaim the old oaken bucket from our rival Purdue. For Kate Senny, I'm Kristen Carroll. Have a good night.